Hello, my name is Peng Kong Jin. I am from Traffic Schemes Design Development. Today, I'm going to share with you a little bit about um, sheltered road crossings, uh, especially with regards to traffic management around sheltered road crossings. The outline of my presentation will be such, uh, key traffic management consideration for high covered lingways. In short, we'll call it HCL. Uh, the types of crossing facilities under high covered lingways, uh, common issues and learning points we would like to share with you. Uh, and I would like to take this opportunity to share also a little bit of what we would like to see for traffic layout plan submissions with regards to the details of traffic layout plans, some examples, and uh, some information sources which we would like to share with you. What are some key traffic management considerations for high covered lingways? Visibility. The visibility of waiting and crossing pedestrians and the prominence of traffic control devices, if any, must be maintained at all times. High cover lingway structures should not block traffic control devices such as traffic signs, traffic lights, flashing beacons, etc. Motorists along the road should also have clear view of pedestrians waiting and crossing under the high cover lingway. There are also different types of crossing facilities under high cover lingways. And this is based on the level of traffic and pedestrians' interaction. It could be an informal crossing, a zebra crossing, a signalised pedestrian crossing, and other supporting features like railings and road humps. In short, it is important to remember this um, concept, which is to, be, to see and to be able to be seen. So whenever you are designing high cover lingways, uh, it's always important to remember this principle to ensure that a pedestrian is able to see and a pedestrian can be seen and for a driver, a motorist, to be able to see the pedestrian or and the crossing facility. Right now, I'd like to share with you some examples of these crossing facilities. Uh, the most basic one, obviously, is a curb cut ramps or informal crossings, as we what we call. Uh, and it is suitable for accesses and side roads where there's low traffic and pedestrian interaction. And here in this example, you have two pictures. All right. This is a high cover lingway across a side road. And on your right, it's a high cover lingway across an HDB access. So as you can see, the high cover lingway column should not block pedestrian's path, as shown here. Uh, motorists and pedestrians are able to look out for each other, and that's what we really want. And the area has to be well lit. Uh, and to make sure that the footpath, ramps, tactiles, and road markings, curb markings are clearly visible uh, for the pedestrians and the motorists. Next, we have a zebra crossing. And a zebra crossing is more suitable for a road with moderate traffic and pedestrian interaction. On your left is a mid block zebra crossing, and on your right is a zebra crossing and a slip road. As you can see, um, the high covered lingway columns do not obstruct pedestrians. Uh, there is adequate lateral clearance between the columns and the curb. Uh, motorists and pedestrians are able to look out for each other. Uh, the area should be well lit, and there are flashing beacons and signs, and these are not obstructed. The next type of crossing is a signalised pedestrian crossing, and is suitable for roads where there is a much higher level of interaction between traffic and pedestrians. Okay. And here we see uh, two pictures and two, at two different angles of a mid-block signalised pedestrian crossing. Again, um, the high cover lingway columns do not obstruct pedestrians. Uh, there must be adequate lateral clearance for the columns to the curb. In this case, we would prefer if the spacing is at least two metres. Motorists and pedestrians are able also to look out for each other. The area is well lit and uh, the traffic light signals are not obstructed. One thing to look up, to keep in mind is that um, the reason why there has to be a two meter clearance is so that we can place the traffic signal pole within the high covered lingway. This would enable the pedestrian to be able to press the push button on the traffic signal pole. Now I'd like to share with you some case examples, some common issues and learning points uh, over the years where we have learned. 
uh, these examples are not meant to discredit any QP contractors or agencies. We just want to share this with you so that uh, we can all learn together. Okay, this is a case one where a high cover linkway was constructed next to an existing zebra crossing. As you can see from the diagram on the left, a plan view of the diagram, um, the zebra crossing was here, which was an existing zebra crossing, and a high cover linkway was actually built beside the zebra crossing, resulting in a misalignment of uh, the high cover linkway with the zebra crossing. And what happened was pedestrians started to cross under the high cover linkway, uh, and not at the zebra crossing. So effectively, they were jaywalking. Uh, motorists were also unsure as to where they should actually stop. Should they stop uh, before the high cover linkway or before the zebra crossing? So that added to confusion. So this created an unsafe situation for a short period of time for the pedestrians and motorists. Uh, and the reason was also because the high cover linkway, was, which was still under construction, uh, was not barricaded. So pedestrians had free access to walk under the high cover linkway. So we rectified this issue immediately when we found out about it. Um, we, temporary water filled barriers was placed around the uncompleted high covered linkway so that pedestrians would be channelized to the existing zebra crossing. Um, the road cut also had to be realigned because the contractor later had to relocate the zebra crossing under the high covered linkway, the newly constructed high covered linkway. And because of that, there was a need to realign the curbs. Um, the existing zebra crossing had to be removed and a new zebra crossing had to be installed. So this picture that was taken on, on, on this screen was taken just after the temporary barricades were installed by the contractor. So the learning point here is that when you design and the design and construction team ought to be aware of the existing road infrastructure in their proposal. Uh, and please ensure that the barriers and signages are place during construction and sequence the, the order of your construction such that uh, pedestrian safety will not be compromised. Case 2. A high cover linkway constructed next, also to, to, next to a zebra crossing. And this, in this photo on the left, it's a similar situation as what I showed you before. Um, the high cover linkway was constructed, it was completed, however, um, the zebra crossing was not relocated fast enough as a result of which pedestrian obviously would cross under the high cover linkway and not at the zebra crossing. So it created a similar problem, but it was rectified immediately. Uh, with, and the learning point again for this is that the design and construction team ought to be aware and mindful of existing infrastructure, especially at the design phase, and to stage their construction activity such that um, the safety of pedestrians and motorists are, is not compromised. And that way you can also reduce uh, unsafe situation and abortive construction works. Case three, a high cover linkway column installed too near to a road curb. This is an example. Uh, this high cover linkway column was constructed too close to the curb edge. The intention was actually to install a traffic signal at, at, under this high cover uh, linkway. And because the column was placed only one meter from the curb edge. It was not possible to install traffic, a traffic light pole. So hence, it was too close. There was no space to install a traffic light pole. Traffic lights in front of columns would have been too far for anyone to press the push button. But if we place a traffic light pole after the column, if we place it after the column, then it would, obviously it would obstruct the traffic light and it would also obstruct the pedestrian path. So what did we do in this case? Obviously, it would be too expensive for us to demolish the high cover linkway and to rebuild a new one. So the rectification solution in this case was to narrow the carriageway, push out the curb so that we get more space to plant the traffic light pole to be uh, under the high cover linkway. So the learning point here, obviously, is that at the design stage, it's important to know um, how close your columns ought to be from the curb edge 
especially so if it's a signalised pedestrian crossing. And for contractors, I think it's essential for you to point out these things to the QP, to the, to the designer, uh, if you encounter that such a situation, so that adjustments or design change can be made instead of having uh, this built and then rectified later. Here's another case uh, involving the enhancement of an existing crossing under an existing high cover linkway. So under this high cover linkway, we have a zebra crossing, a raised zebra crossing in fact, uh, as you can see here. And this is photo on the, at the bottom is taken fr from the point of view of a pedestrian approaching the raised zebra crossing. In this instance, traffic has increased, hence the need to convert the existing zebra crossing to a signalised pedestrian crossing. The location of the flashing beacons were not suitable for traffic light poles to be placed because it would be too far away for our pedestrians to be able to reach the push button. Uh, as you can see from the pictures below, the existing, there were some existing barriers around the columns of this high cover linkway. Uh, and it would have been restrictive very restrictive for a person on a wheelchair or on a PMA to be able to reach the push button if it's placed too far away from the waiting platform. So what did we do? Similar to the previous example, uh, we pushed out the curbs under the high cover linkway so we get a little bit more space for pedestrians to stand. We also uh, enable us to place the traffic light poles under the high cover linkway uh, to make it easier for pedestrians to access the push button. And this also made the traffic light aspects uh, more visible. And by narrowing down the carriageway, it also made it safer for pedestrians uh, to cross the road because their accident exposure will be a lot less. So there's obviously solutions that we can explore and whenever we face uh, difficulties to make things safer, better, and more cost-effective. Let me share with you another example, another case uh, involving uh, an existing crossing facility near a new high cover linkway. Here you see two pictures. One on the, the one on the top shows the crossing point at the existing point, which is about 60 meters away from a T, signalized T-junction. And the plan was to construct a new crossing point slightly further away, about 15 to 20 meters away from the existing crossing point, which is here. And the plan, and the plan at that time was to convert um, the crossing point from an informal crossing and to relocate it here and have it to be a signalized pedestrian crossing. And the reason why we did this was because the traffic and the pedestrian activity had increased uh, and there was more interaction between pedestrians and traffic. As such, a new high cover linkway had to be provided. And by providing a high new high, high cover linkway, we expected even more pedestrians to cross the road. A new signalised pedestrian crossing had to be installed and this had to be placed uh, further away from the existing crossing point because if we had placed it at the same point, it would be too close and there would be problems with pedestrian safety and there will be difficulty in coordinating the, coordinating the traffic signals between the T-junction and the mid-block signalised pedestrian crossing. So what do we actually do? So the original informal crossing was actually here. So the crossing point was shifted from here over to this point, further away from the T intersection over here. And this is the point where the high cover linkway is located. And for a plan view, this was the crossing point before, and this is the new crossing point, which is signalized with a high cover linkway. So some channelization of pedestrian was required. Uh, instead of walking to the left, the pedestrians were now required to turn right and use this crossing facility instead. So I think 
This example shows us that one should not just install a high carbon linkway at an existing point, especially if you are changing the crossing type. Consideration has to be made about what kind of crossing types you want to install over a high carbon linkway, because sometimes it might be necessary to relocate these crossing points. So the appreciation of the ground condition, the site condition, the travel patterns of pedestrians and the nature of traffic is also important when you decide to put a road crossing, uh, especially one below a high cover linkway. So that's all I have to say about um, high cover linkways. One aspect of the work uh, involving high cover linkways also involves um, submitting a traffic layout plan. Because when you install a high cover linkway or if you choose to relocate, install a new high cover linkway with a new crossing, a traffic layout plan would be required as a submission. I'd like to share with you some of the things that we'd like to see in uh, traffic layout plans. So for your traffic layout plan submissions, it's important to state your title, display the gazetting table, display the key plans, the location plans, display where the north point is. And it's preferable that the north point faces up as much as you can, unless it's impossible to fit the drawing. Scale. Please state your scale, or better still, insert a scale bar in your drawing. Uh, legends and notes are also important because sometimes there might be certain things that needs to, needs to be considered uh, as during the construction phase uh, in this traffic plan. So please state this in the legends and in the notes. And for the traffic schemes, things like road markings and signs, uh, it's important to adhere to the colour code uh, that the proposal of the traffic-related infrastructure, such as signs, signals, flashing beacons, road hums, railings, these are things associated with crossings, that these are clearly shown. Not just the new ones, but also the existing ones that is to be removed. Uh, make sure that your symbols, your road markings and signs are accurate, clear and well represented. And it's also important to know that we are not building a crossing or a high cover linkway in isolation. You must always look at how pedestrians and traffic will interact around these crossing facilities. So such consideration should also be considered as you design. Right now, I'm going to show you some example uh, of traffic layout plans. This is an example of a good traffic layout plan. The title. Uh, it's recorded here. The gazetting table. The key plan, location plan. The north arrow, which is phasing up. And the scale, which is written here, but it's too small to see. But even if you should put a scale bar, and it's also good enough. Legends and notes. And these are the symbols associated with the traffic schemes. And for the traffic scheme, you will see different colours. Red representing new infrastructure. Yellow, there are some bits of yellow which represents existing infrastructure that has to be changed. Um, the road markings, the lane markings, the arrow markings are all clearly annotated and uh, very well displayed. Okay, and this zebra crossing, a raised zebra crossing with high cover linkway, is placed in such a manner where, it's due, where there's due consideration of the site, of the site uh, situation. In this case, this zebra crossing is placed offset about 15 meters away from the unsignalized T junction. Yeah, and that's a good, and that is a good design. Here's another example, an example of a design that is that we would not accept as a traffic layout plan. Uh, yes, there's the title that is shown. Uh, it's covered in this case. Uh, there's no gazetting table. Uh, we from the, from looking at this picture, we do not know where this high cover linkway or zebra crossing is with regards to its location. There's no road names. And even if there's a road name, we probably wouldn't know where it is. 
Uh, there's no indication of where the north point is. Uh, there's no scale. No legends uh, and notes associated with traffic schemes. And as you can see, there are only a couple of road markings at the crossing. Uh, arrow markings and lane markings. But there are a lot of missing elements, road markings and signs, which is not displayed in this traffic scheme. So, and there are also other unnecessary details that traffic layout plans uh, do not require. Things like cross sections for the structure or plan view of the structure. These are not necessary because uh, we are not approving uh, the structure. We are actually approving the traffic layout plan. So this is not traffic layout plan. So in order to find good examples and standard drawings, these are some of the references you can go to, and these are available on our website. A very important document that uh, engineers, designers, uh, and contractors should look for is the LTA standard details of road elements. Another important document if you are building new roads and new infrastructure due to a development will be the Code of Practice for Street Works proposal relating to development works. And things associated with commuter facilities, uh, architectural design criteria, you can find these in the architectural design criteria uh, from L the LTA LT website. With that, this ends uh, my presentation on road crossings and on traffic layout plans. Thank you for your time.